What's going on internet? I'm with Barbecue and today I'll be reviewing Spider-Man Miles Morales, the PS5 version. Today we're gonna find out, does it slap or is it cap? La 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 barbecue. All right, let's hop right into it. All right, first, let's start off with the story because we got to know what it's about if we're playing it, right? All right, the story picks up uh, about a year after the events of The City That Never Sleeps, which, if you didn't know, is DLC from Marvel Spider-Man, the first game that came out a few years ago. Miles Morales, having gained spider-like powers himself at the end of the first game, looks to become the newest web-slinger of New York City under the guidance of his mentor, Peter Parker. All right, now, so let's start off with my personal thoughts about what I think about the story in general. So uh, the story is pretty predictable, I'm not gonna lie. I personally even ha haven't even read too much of the Miles Morales comics myself, but I will say that as soon as you hop onto this game, it is pretty predictable. I'm not gonna give you any spoilers in this review, so you don't have to worry about that. But I will say like a few minutes in, you already knew who the villain was. You already knew pretty much what was gonna happen through the story. But granted, I don't think that takes away from the story. I still think it's pretty good. The The end of the game is really good. I love I, every, even in the first game, I love the visuals that it gave you with that final boss fight. It, it was so great. It was so great. So the uh, runtime for this game is pretty short. I did beat it in about 10 hours, maybe even less than that. And I do know some people that beat it in even less time. So if you run straight through the story and don't play any of the side missions, which I think is a big disservice, I think you'll finish this game pretty fast. I think the side missions do have, have some value in this game. And if you do have the time to do them, I suggest it. And next up, we're going to hop into performance. I played this game on performance mode and I had no issues on my PS5 with it. It ran smooth. New York City is looks better than ever it is looks amazing it looks better than it did on the first game obviously and like the set pieces the design the the pure chaos that the ps5 can handle playing this game is really nice and it's like it, it sometimes you just have to stop and look around at how beautiful new york city looks and it's it's just amazing the same pretty much ui from the first game and uh yeah yeah i think the game looks great uh the ui isn't that intelligible still because uh, you'll be right next to somebody and they won't even see you or hear you uh, tons of that happened during the stealth mode but that's to be uh, expected in big open world games like this with the UI that has to be damn near omniscient to be uh, great and the, the level design and everything just impressed me every time I booted up the game so I really I, I was just in love with this game from start to finish with how great it looked. And lastly, for performance, I ran into no issues. Some people said they encountered some bugs, but personally, I ran into no issues. I didn't have that uh, PS5 save issue that a lot of people were talking about when they first came out. I, I had no glitches, no bugs or anything, which really shouldn't be praised like that. But with how some games are coming out nowadays, congrats to you, Insomniac. You made a game that wasn't broken on release. Like, thank you. Like, it shouldn't be that hard. I paid $60, I would want a good working game. All right, now let's move on to the gameplay. The combat felt great. Miles does feel a little bit different from Peter Parker. Uh, Miles is a bit quicker. I've noticed that a lot. Uh, when, even when he's just swinging around, he feels a little bit quicker than Peter Parker does. And he has quite a bit different abilities. Uh, but that goes to say that nothing major changed with the game from the uh, Spider-Man uh, Spider Miles Morales to the original Spider-Man game that came out. Nothing too much changed with the combat, just a few different things. Like uh, Miles is equipped with the Venom Strike and he can turn invisible. These are things that are canon in his uh, lore. So those are things that Peter Parker didn't have. And on top of that, he had the swagger of a black teen. So I mean, I, I don't know how Peter Parker can really compete with that. Uh, freestyle, he, his freestyle swings, he can do backflips and other tricks like that. I know Peter Parker could do some of that too, but it just feels different, bro. When you, the first time you get a free swing and that Kit Cuddy and Jaden Smith track starts playing, I was just like, oh, oh God, like Jesus, that I, I was willing to take the DMCA strike for that whole sequence, bro. It was it was amazing. The PS5 speed is really noticeable in this game. The there are non-existent loading screens. They are non-existent. And fast travel takes literal milliseconds. It feels like not not really milliseconds, but it's very short. But I will say that I never even really wanted to even use fast travel. I used it once to see how fast it was. 
but I never wanted to use it. I just swing across the city because it's so damn fun. If you use fast travel in this game, you really are just trying to push it and just like complete the missions. Unless something you're at the bottom of the map and you're trying to go all the way to the top, I can understand that. But still, personally, I'm swinging there. I don't care. All right, now let's talk about the side missions, which goes in the gameplay as well. Finding tech parts was a good way to uh, upgrade your abilities on the skill tree, which I'll talk about later as well. Some of the side missions have completely different side stories as well. Like you'll go into a side mission and it'll be a whole different story about like how uh, Miles Morales needs to go help the feast bank because some gang members like turn off the water or something and they got shut down. Like I thought that was really cool and it gave some meaning to some of these side missions and side quests. So I, I really enjoyed them. You can go do random crimes like stopping burglaries and stopping uh, robberies and all that stuff. So that was fun too. I always enjoy doing that on Spider-Man games. Lastly, the Prowler side missions. Like, oh man, I did, I did not enjoy those. That's just a personal thing. Maybe some people do like going around the city and collecting random sounds, but it wasn't for me. It really wasn't for me. It was really weird that this is a side mission, but hey, it was an easy way to rank up and get better uh, cosmetics, I guess. And then let's talk about the camera. The, this is the last part of the gameplay. I'd say the camera was good mostly. I noticed this issue like towards the end of the game. I noticed that the camera, when you would knock people in the air and you go up and fight them as Spider-Man, obviously, and for some reason the camera would just zoom in and I couldn't see what was what else was going around going on around me. I couldn't like perfect time other things. Uh, it was really disrupting a little bit to me, but I only noticed this at the end of the game, and I'm not sure why that even happened, but it was weird. Uh, but that's just a personal thing. Maybe some people like that and can still operate fine with it, but I really wanted to see what was going on around me and see who was shooting at me or who I needed to go fight next. And that was that was kind of weird but eh. next we're going to hop into the customization all right the skill it has a skill tree it has a big move set list that you can upgrade and abilities that you can look at but i will say that in this game when you compare it to the other one that there's less customization there's less things that you can uh, really add on to miles morales's kit to make him uh even deadlier or well he's not killing people but make him even more <laughs> like uh dangerous like be a better player you know what i'm trying to say like it's hard it's leveling leveling him up really doesn't do much because there's not much to level up you know what i'm saying like you can upgrade his venom strikes you can upgrade uh some of his uh, attacks but other than that it's not as much as it was in the uh, original spider-man game uh the suits were really good i personally uh, play with the black suit the full black suit the whole time and i used the movie suit a little bit until it started hurting my eyes there is a feature where you can get the spider-man into the spider-verse skin into the game and use the um, same animation that they did in the movie and it was great i loved it but uh, my viewers told me to turn it off so they got mad because they it was hurting their eyes and it, it eventually started hurting mine too but i, I still enjoyed it uh, but overall, I do think there's less suits, obviously. I, I think all of this can just be uh, wrapped up in saying that there's less because this is lesser of a game. This, honestly, in all, it's an, an expansion of the original Spider-Man game, which a lot of people knew, a lot of people didn't know. Some people thought it was just going to be a whole game just as long as the original, but it's not. All right, in conclusion, I love this game. I love this game, and if I was not being biased, I'd tell you to buy it and don't think twice about it. I only had a few negatives if you look back on the video. My few negatives were the lack of customization, there's less options, uh, the runtime is pretty short, and that the camera just randomly jumps close for no reason. This, Like I said earlier, this game is truly an expansion, so if you're, you love the first game or, or even like the first game, I feel like you'll enjoy this one. If you like the gameplay, all that stuff, you'll enjoy it. So my suggestion is, if you don't have a PS5, if you have a PS4, this is not a console exclusive, so you can just buy it on PS4 and play it. And I heard great things about it on PS4 too. I heard it still looks amazing. So if you are lucky to get one on sale, that'd be the ideal way to buy it. Or if you just can't wait, you need some more games to play right now, which I'd be surprised because there's a lot of stuff out right now. I'd say buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. This is not a game I'd want to skip. This is a big moment for the black community and just like even just Spider-Man fans in general. Like the swagger of a black teen is so real in this game. Go buy it, go support it. Cause if you don't support it, they're not gonna make more of it. But I will say that this game is not worth stressing over a PS5 for. It's not a console exclusive. There's other things. There's not much to play on the PS5. So if you're still 
rushing and panicking trying to find one to play this game don't just play it on ps4 unless you just really want the experience like i did because i was not going to buy this on ps4 to be honest i was going to wait however long to play it on ps5 but yeah that's my suggestion and uh let me also say this slaps this game slaps i enjoyed playing it i haven't had this much fun playing a game in a long time so there you go that's my opinion that's it. What did you think about the game? Do you think it slaps? Do you think it's cap? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you guys next time on slap or cap. See you guys later. Yes, sir. Did you like that video? Me too, because I made it. I know it's good. If you did like that video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new here, subscribe. Make sure you have that bell turned on for notifications for when I make a new video. Also, you can catch me on any of the socials down below. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all those. I'm on there. That's it. See you guys later.